Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 10th Ansible Contributor Summit. It's part of the Ansible Fest 2020 virtual experience. My name is Carol Chen, and I work for the Ansible community team here at Red Hat. Together with John Barker Gundalo, who will come on shortly, we will be your host for this event. We're really excited and glad to see so many people joining, not only to learn about and use the automation platform that is, that is Ansible, but also to engage with the community, participate in the activities, as well as contribute to the Ansible community and the project. So just a few housekeeping uh, rules, I guess. Um, all this content will be recorded. Some have already been pre-recorded for the event. So uh, you will be able to access them from the Ansible community uh, YouTube channel after the event. And uh, please feel free to use the chat function to engage and um, talk, chat with uh, the community and, and us, as well as use the Q&A uh, function to ask questions, especially when the chat uh, window gets busy. So please use the Q&A um, functionality. Throughout the event, we'll probably be using the poll to get some of your feedback and ideas and um, suggestions and things like that. So watch out for those uh, popping up. And finally, we also have an RRC channel. If you use RRC, we are on the free node server as in the channel Ansible-Community. So please feel free to join us there as well. I will now hand it over to Gundalo to introduce himself as well as to do a round of introduction for um, people we have on the on, online. So Gundalo, please. Hey, Kyle. Thank you very much. Um, I'm John Barker. I generally go as Gundalo on most things online. I'm a associate manager that looks after the community team here at Ansible. Um, I'm sorry that we can't do this in person due to the world as it currently stands, but it's amazing to see 250 people uh, online, which is probably well over double of what we normally get. So that's absolutely amazing. I can see from the chat that we've got people all over the globe. Um, so that's great. Um, what is the easiest way for me? So yeah, I, I look after the, um, the the community engineering team. I'm based in Manchester, UK. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited for everyone to be here. I'm now just going to run down the list. So I can see Sandra's on screen. So Sandra, if you could uh, say hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Sandra McCann at uh, SamCan on IRC and GitHub. I'm one of the documentation writers for Ansible, and I'm, I'm really excited to see so many people from so many different places. This is going to be fun. Excellent. Thank you very much. Mr. Sutcliffe. Uh, you appear to be muted, Greg. Or at least you're not muted, but I can't hear you. That works better, I hope. There we go. <laughs> That's always got to be a hiccup. Yes, my name is Greg Sutcliffe. I work with Gundalo and Carol and the rest of the community team uh, here at Red Hat. Uh, my job is to do the statistics for the community. I'm a data scientist and I produce uh, a variety of tools and reports and things that uh, help us to grow and manage the community. So so ultimately, uh, my goal is to build things for all of the maintainers as well. Uh, it's all about the community. Uh, you'll hear more from me later on. And if you have any questions about the statistics of the community, come talk to me. Thank you very much. Uh, Rick Elrod, are you able to, to say hi? OK, going to Richard number two, Mr. Henshaw, are you able to? Say hello. Yeah, I can do. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, Richard Henshaw, I'm the product manager uh, for the Ansible Automation Platform on the product side. So I'll lurk around for the first hour today, and um, hopefully we'll see some of you at Ansible Fest for the rest of the week for the second half of the contributors around Thursday. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff, more commonly known as Mr. Gerling Guy, are you uh, able to say hello? Yes, I'm having trouble with the video camera today, but uh, I am here and excited to talk about all the new collections and things. Thank you. Uh, Soren, able to say hi? 
Hi, my name is Soris Barnia and I work for Red Hat as part of the OpenStack team. I'm located in Norwich, UK. Um, I do happen to have a strong interest in continuous integration and obviously Ansible. And uh, I do currently maintain Molecule and Ansible Lint. Uh, you. you can find me as SBR on Freenode. Cool, and we'll hear a bit more from Soren later on yeah. today. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jimmy C. Hey, <clears throat> I'm James Camerata, also known as Jimmy C. I'm a longtime Ansible uh, maintainer. I'm now currently the uh, manager of the core engineering team. Hey. Thank you. Uh, Jason. Good. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason McCurr. I'm the VP for management and automation at Red Hat, uh, and I've been at Ansible uh, for almost exactly five years now uh, when there were only three people on the Ansible core team, all of whom I'm super pleased to say are still here, which is kind of cool after five years after an acquisition. And uh, thanks for thanks for having me and thanks everyone for coming. Cheers, Jason. Uh, Rohit from uh, Content, are you able to say hello? Uh, Mr. Apnell, Tim, are you around and able to say hello? I am around. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Tim Apnell. I'm one of the uh, uh, product managers currently working on a lot of uh, Kubernetes and cloud native stuff. And uh, yeah, I've been around the Ansible community for, man, since almost the, the earliest days. Um, been with Red Hat for over five years or with Ansible and through all the acquisitions for over five years. So uh, hello, everyone, and glad to see you all here. Hmm. Cool. Um, this is one of the bits where it's a bit difficult because normally we'd sort of wave the camera around the uh, around the room, but it's uh, not something we can do today. I believe in blue jeans. there's a wave hand option. or raise hand option. If you want to do that and turn on your camera, we can pass over you, I believe. Yeah. We have today on the line as well from XLab. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Please say hi, introduce uh, yourself briefly. Uh, hello, so my name is Tadej. Uh, I actually am not part of the Ansible team. I, I only work on uh, Ansible collections for SensuGo and some other partners, but uh, I'm the one who is mostly vocal about uh, high quality Ansible collections or, or testing on such things. So, hello. Thank you. And today we'll also speak uh, later on today. Um, yes, so for, for those, as Scandalo mentioned, if you'd just like to say hi, you can use the um, wave hand function, which is on the top right, I believe, there's an icon and uh, we can let you um, be heard, <laughs> just say hi. Uh, I think somebody joined Goma, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, Goma Fisalvi, would you like to say hi? Yeah, hi, I'm Gomati from the Ansible uh, networking team. Thank you. Okay, uh, Richard uh, Regal wrote, should, should you try again? Yeah, and, uh, hopefully my audio will work now. Uh, Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm Rick Elrod. I am the release engineer for uh, Ansible 2.8.2.9 and Ansible Base. And uh, looking forward to meeting everyone. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Well, we are waiting for more. People join, let me. Do you see my shared screen or any kind of window popping up? 
Yeah, I can oh. see the uh, agenda. Oh, great. Yes. So I just wanted to share the agenda for today, and we will try to keep to this as much as possible because there might be people who join at certain times uh, just for uh, some of the topics, although we hope that you stay for the whole event. Um, so we have about 15 minutes. Feel free to ask questions, chat, and um, we can get some, some getting to know each other going on. I see a lot of people from all over the world, India, Canada, Mexico City, Malaysia. Hi. I, I was originally from Singapore, so I'm currently based in Finland, Ukraine. Wow, that's amazing. Ah, sure, we can maybe start with a poll. That would be great. Oh, Argentina. Wow, Iceland. Oh. It is, on the one hand, it is a little bit sad that we come all meet in person, but on the other hand, it's amazing to see so many people from all around the world. Bolivia, Austria, France, Luxembourg, Turkey, Brazil, Vermont. <laughs> it's nonstop, Egypt, wow. <laughs> More from India, Brazil. US, Spain, Switzerland, Russia, Memphis, Abu Dhabi, Germany, Rhode Island, boring America. No, America is really good, great. I lived there for 11 years. I still have a lot of family and friends there. Philippines. Okay, I have a question. Um, it would be great if you can use the Q&A function but I will read it out and um, feel free to jump in to answer anyone. How you guys get ideas to make an Ansible agent list tool? What first comes to mind to make an agent list tool? Just curious to know. I guess this is good for people who have were involved since the beginning. Yeah, could I maybe um, pick on Jimmy C? I believe you're around from I'm pretty early on with the early discussions with Dan. Sorry, what was the question? I was uh, typing in Slack. I'll be honest. It's okay, I'll repeat it. How, how did you guys get ideas to make an agentless, uh, uh, the Ansible agentless? What first comes to mind, came to mind to make an agentless tool? Just curious to know. The, the evolution definitely started with the first kind of config management tool that Michael DeHaan wrote, which was called Funk, F-U-N-C. Um, that was something that was kind of tied into Cobbler, the, the open source project we were using that uh, revolved around building systems at the time. And it never really took off. And part of the reason um, was that Puppet was already very popular and Funk basically operated very similar to Puppet to where, you know, you had like kind of a key exchange and had to like kind of uh, initialize it and hand off keys between systems. Um, if anybody's used Puppet, it was almost identical. Um, so after kind of, you know, a couple of years passed by, I guess Michael had the idea of, you know, he and a couple other people had kicked around the idea um, of trying to do config management over SSH. And he started working on it, and that was kind of the evolution of the idea. It was just, you know, kind of evolved from a couple people sitting around, kicking around ideas. It was a little bit before my time. I came on about a year. It was a, a year after the project actually started. It, it, it existed at that time, unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, we have a couple more questions. And also, by the way, there's a poll going on. So um, feel free to click the poll tab or feature and then answer that. Um, so a couple more questions from Stefan. Can Ansible manage things on an Arduino device? I wish to install exact, uh, wish to install exact libraries on it. 
Yeah, I, I believe her Arduino board is similar to like a, the Raspberry Pi. So she, I, I'm guessing it's like a Debian based setup. So yeah, you should just be able to to treat it. I know Golden Guy's done a lot of stuff with with Raspberry Pis. The, the fact is, you know, you've got Linux running in a, I don't know, massive great system Z mainframe or a laptop or a server or a little Raspberry Pi. It's just a Linux box at the end of the day, and Ansible's are perfectly happy to to do its thing on there as long as it's uh, got Python on there. Gundalo, um sorry, I'm going to jump in there. An Arduino is not like a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> Um, it's a simpler device. So you, you upload a single like loop of code to it, and it runs it basically. So it's not a full Linux install. Um, yeah. And so um, I would guess it probably can't run Ansible directly. What I would expect is you could probably run the systems that talk to Arduinos uh, from Ansible and maintain exactly what what is upload being uploaded. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Is a lot of times an Arduino or a chip that's similar to it would be managed through software that Ansible could interact with. But typically, that's not something that you would put into your automation workflow the same way you would with Raspberry Pis or other servers. Thank you very much for, for the background there. All right, the next question we have, well, actually, we already have an answer. Thank you. Uh, how can we get? How can we start contributing to this awesome project? This is the first time I'm joining the conference and very excited to learn from others. Thank you. You are exactly at the right place. Um, we will have a, as you see, the agenda, many uh, things that we will share about how to contribute, different ways, uh, different tips, and um, you know, from how to get started to testing to um, events and statistics. There are many ways, so um, feel free to check out the agenda and stay for the event, uh, whole day, and um, find, find out how, how you can uh, contribute. And also, we have a day two on Thursday where we get a bit more involved, and you can see the actual uh, discussion and uh, how, how we collaborate uh, with the community. So um, you're at the right place. Great question. Thank you. And RPG has put some um, links to GitHub where you can get started with the dashboard and easy fixes and so on. By the way, I also see that uh, we have a few new people who just joined who can maybe introduce themselves. Uh, Sam, Ganesh, and Alicia, feel free to unmute and give a quick introduction. Oh, well, I can go. This is Alicia Cozine. Um, I am a Cozine on IRC and also on GitHub. Um, and I am a technical writer here at Red Hat, and I'm the lead tech writer for Ansible. Um, so, any questions about? documentation, about how to contribute to documentation, um, feel free to ping me on IRC or here in the meeting. Um, and I'm happy to chat about words at any time, how words can help us all use Ansible better and uh, help each other. Thanks, Alicia. Um, Sam or Ganesh? Hi, my name is uh, Sam Doran. I'm a member of the Ansible core team. I'm a longtime Ansible user and uh, I guess been working on the Ansible core team for about three and a half years now. And I still love and use Ansible a ton. So it's a tool that I care very much about because I use it um, for just about anything I can. So I, um, I really enjoy uh, the community and the work. So glad that you're all here. And, you know, if you have questions about Ansible or want to contribute, uh, we love to have contributors and we'd love to help people, uh, you know, learn how to write Python and learn how to use Ansible. So glad to have you all here. Thanks, Sam. Uh, I think who else is on? Dinesh? Devo? If not, we have a few more questions. Thanks for all the great questions. 
Miguel Tillis asks, since Ansible is open source, how long after its creation did it take for you all to start making money from your open source product? And also, how did you first initially make money? Uh, <laughs> anyone do you want to take that? I think this is more before Red Hat, probably. Yeah, I was actually typing an answer to that as well. Um, it, it, the Ansible as a company was formed roughly a year after the open source project was founded. Um, we were doing pretty well, but I'm not sure if we were even quite profitable when Red Hat bought us because we were growing so much. Um, we had gone from when I started six people all the way up to, I think we're, we're in like the seventies or low eighties by the time Red Hat caught us, uh, bought us. So, um, beyond that, it was selling tower. It was selling licenses to tower. That's how we were making money. But it, from what I remember, we were pretty close to breaking even when Red Hat bought us, which was pretty impressive for being a startup after two years. Yeah, and just I'll add to Jimmy's, um, if you want to get into the business aspect, is that Ansible as a company had only taken one small round of funding and had made it last for, how, how long was it, Jimmy, like two years? Yeah, it was two years when we had been around for uh, just over two years, two and a half years almost when Red Hat bought us. Yeah. Thanks, Jimmy and Tim. So there's a question about if it's still possible to add people to the event. Can someone still register? Yes, I have put the link in the answer. They can still register, I think, until the end of the event. So please uh, encourage them to do so. And there's a question about indempotency, which is answered by today. Thank you. Is this community only for Ansible Engine or also for AWX project by Joe? I would say we are all Ansible and Ansible related projects. So AWX, Galaxy, uh, Molecule, what else? Yeah, um, Ansible Lin, the, the Galaxy side. Yeah, we 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 help all of those uh, projects. Um, likewise, if there's other people doing cool stuff with Ansible, we we like to sort of help promote and support those as uh, those groups as well. You know, sometimes it's a case of sending some sending some stickers. Sometimes it's a case of helping uh, provide CI, so provide uh, testing resources because that can get expensive. Um, yeah, and anything is, is relevant, uh, please throw questions into the, the Q&A. I noticed my boss has just arrived. Robin, would you like to say hello? Hello. I was here before, but my video was not working. It wanted to be sad and boring snap camera, but without the pickle. Uh, and because I uninstalled it, it still wants to show up. So hello. My name's Robin Bergeron. I'm the manager of the community team of lovely folks uh, at Ansible, at Red Hat, at IBM. That's a mouthful now. Yay! And I just successfully dropped off my kid at school, so. Yes, that is a, that is an amazing feat when it's high school, so. <laughs> I see also uh, Nate, Nathaniel. If you'd like to say hi. Hello. Hopefully this is working. I've never used Primetime before. Um, so hi, I'm Nathaniel Case. Uh, I am one of the engineers on Ansible Networking. Um, been working here for almost five years, basically right after the acquisition. Um, yeah, that's that's me. All right, and I think we're almost at the half hour mark, which means uh, we have Gondolo coming up with his presentation. Um, but please continue to ask the questions because we can still uh, answer them and as, as we go along and everybody can see the Q&A. So 
Thanks for doing that. Um, Gandalo, over to you. Uh, hopefully, I, mean, I can't see what I'm showing, but hopefully you can see a slide up that says uh, contributing to Ansible. Yes, we see it. Excellent. Um, and for those of you that are looking at me uh, on, the, on the camera, apologies if I keep on getting close. I'm running this off a little laptop and I can't actually see what's on my screen. I went up, so apologies for the, the close there. Cool. Um, so, yeah, um, thank you, Carol. And most of all, thank you to the 340 people that have decided to to take some time out of the day today um, to come and join and to find out a bit more about uh, how you contribute to Ansible. I can see from the poll that we did, and thank you to the 200 plus people that answered that, um, that 80% uh, of you have not contributed to Ansible before. Um, that's really cool because um, you're in the right place to try and understand how to do that and uh, what's involved. Um, so over the, the next presentation, I will just explain a few different ways that you can contribute. Hopefully, I'll make you understand that you are more than capable of the helping out in various different ways. Um, as Carol said earlier, we're recording all of these slides, uh, all of the videos. This slide is also um, online, and we have speaker notes in there. So if you want to look back at this uh, in your own time and look through some of the links and the demo notes and bits are, are in there, you just load it up and press S. Um, to start with, I'm John Bach. I am an associate manager now for the uh, Red Hat Community Engineering team. Um, you can reach me as Gundalo on Freenode and IRC and the Gundalo on Twitter. Um, I always like talking to different people, so please do shout out at any point if you want to find out more. So today we're going to talk a little bit about um, what you as individuals can bring. Um, uh, the different ways that you can help. Talk a little bit about how um, we do development at Ansible, and this includes the main engine, Ansible base, as well as the different collections. Talk a bit about reviewing PRs, and then we'll uh, finally talk a little bit about the different ways that you can join in the conversation. As we mentioned earlier, please do use the Q&A function that's built into Primetime. Uh, there should be a chat window on the right-hand side, I believe it is. Ask questions at any point, I'll glance over there and we'll uh, do a run through um, on there. Especially if you've ever had any challenges of contrib contributing or, or got stuck, that's really good information um, that we'd like to know so we can make that process better, as well as being able to help you out today. Most of what I'm going to run through is uh, referenced on the community guide. Um, you can have a look through there at your own leisure. I'd like to start off with a few little myths of why people think they might be able to uh, contribute. Um, people that know me know that I'm most definitely not a contributor, uh, not a programmer, and they prefer me not to write any code, um, especially code that, doesn't, uh, <laughs> that ends up in the product. Um, that said, I still, you know, I think in the top 20 uh, contributors to Ansible, mainly through writing documentation, tests, and little uh, smaller book fixes. I know everyone that's um, ever used Ansible is quite comfortable with YAML, because that's what playbooks are in, and that means you have all the necessary skills to be able to update, for example, the module documentation or the examples. Uh, likewise, if you want to test any of the changes, you don't need to know how they're put together, you just need to know how to check out that pull request, run it through, see if it fixes the problem, and add a comment on. Um, one of the other things we hear quite often is people that are brand new feel that they can't help out. I think uh, new biz, new users have got a really interesting perspective. They can keep us honest in terms of what the problems are um, to getting started in learning curve. You know, I, I think it's fair to say that Ansible has a uh, more gentle learning curve than some of the uh, utilities that are, and tools that are out there, but there is still some knowledge. Right, but you can help help improve that at any point. Um, Git is a, does have a learning curve. Um, that said, there's still lots of ways that you can get involved. Most of the docs pages have a edit on GitHub link on the right hand side. Um, so you can click that and you just be dropped into a GitHub editor on github.com and be able to update the docs at any point. Also, don't worry about getting things wrong, right? If you raise a pull, create a put PR, a pull request, and it doesn't quite work as you'd expect, is you're not going to break anything, right? We will we will talk you through the process of being able to 
to fix that and the, the helpful Ansible bot will come in turn and try and give you some guidance, say if you need to do a rebase or how to try and get the test working. Um, we often hear that people think writing tests is difficult. Um, most of the tests for Ansible are actually just playbooks. Again, we know you know your way around playbooks because that's what you uh, do for most of the time. I'd say testing is probably one of the most important ways that people can help. Uh, that's because having tests gives us the confidence that we can merge changes to a module or a plugin or a bit of core engine, um, knowing that we won't break anything because we've got some good test coverage there. Uh, I know some people will maybe disagree with this um, a bit, but this is part of the reason that we've sort of split out the core engine from the uh, from the collections from where most of the modules are. Try by contributions are welcome. If you, you know, if everything in Ansible works for you flawlessly and you just look at one thing and you find one tiny bit of documentation that doesn't make sense or you want to improve and you update that bit of documentation, that is brilliant. You have, you know, caused a net positive um, uh, effect in the world. Likewise, if you write a bit of uh, code or contribute to bug fix, that's brilliant. If you add a new module, it's nice for people to sort of stick around and help help support that in case there are questions, but you know, this isn't a, a, a must. Nice to have. Um, so I know we've sort of gone through five myths there and people go, oh yeah, that's fine, John, but you know, it doesn't really work like that in the, in the real world. Well, I'd like to show you um, my first PR effort to Ansible, and it's this lovely little one-line change here. This is my first PR to Ansible. Um, I hadn't used GitHub before. I was very confused by that. I didn't know how to fork anything or do bits like that, but I managed to get my, my first little docs fix, and I, I, I was quite happy. After a little bit, I um, was using the GebComp module, which is a Debian um, uh, sorry, a, a module for configuring uh, dev conferences, for setting up Debian-based, so Debian Ubuntu systems. I had some issues with it, and I found there was a little fix I could put in, put in there. They're like my two first pull requests. If you actually look at the histories, my pull requests, you'll notice there are a load of other ones closed in between where I just was shouting at GitHub, um, unable to clean the rebase my PRs. And that's fine, you know, you're not hurting anyone, people will help you through. For those of you that were around at the um, beginning, uh, I think we saw a great example of between us, we know uh, lots of things. It turns out I know absolutely nothing about Arduino apart from uh, simple little boards. I didn't know that they uh, you basically pre-built an image, but it turns out as a group, some other people did know that and had some examples of how we could uh, use Ansible to build the image and then deploy the image on. No one needs to know everything, and or should we know everything, right? There's so many different areas of expertise. Every single person in this room, or 200, uh, 350 of us, can contribute something. You know something that someone else doesn't. You can bring that knowledge into Ansible. Um, and that, I think, is absolutely amazing. I think that's a real power of open source. I'm not going to talk much about this slide, and uh, I'm not even sure if it appears that clearly on there. But basically, there's, there's two levels of circles. Um, the, this is about modules, so it's about the directory and the subdirectory. So on the large left circle, the large circle on the left is networking, on the right is cloud, and then you've got the other bits. The uh, more to blue it is, is um, code that's all contributed by the wider community. Red is code that's contributed by Red Hat, and white is where there's a 50-50 split. So ignore what's actually shown here. Just notice that the vast majority of this is blue. The vast majority of modules that ship with Ansible are made, maintained by the community. And that's the, uh, again, the, the real power of open source. Um, this is another cool graph. So this is showing the uh, where pull requests come from. I think this is over a, a two year period. Uh, sorry, over the last 12 months. Um, so the darker the green, the more pull requests, the lighter the green, the fewer pull requests, and the blue circles are some of the, the meetups that Ansible has. So you can really see that this is a worldwide effort. Um, these stats are all by Greg Sutcliffe. He's going to be doing a talk a little bit later on, and we're, we're going to some more details on it.
I guess the main, the main thing that, that's changed really is uh, collections. So this has been a big, big thing. And I'll be honest, I you know, had a bit of doubt on it. Um, now that we're through it, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we've ended up. We've moved from a mono repo, so a single repository, GitHub Ansible Ansible, that had the Ansible engine, the test, the documentation, and the three and a half, four thousand modules. And we've now moved to Ansible Base and a number of independent collections. This has given contributors a lot more um, power. It's really empowered them. It's given them a lot more freedom in how they want to manage their own areas. And we'll have a look at some of the uh, collections later on. Uh, collections will be a major theme over the next uh, three days, so the two days of Ansible Fest plus Thursday's Contributor Summit. Please do keep, uh, keep an eye on those great presentations that will be coming up. We have a number of different collections. Uh, a lot of them are in github.com slash Ansible collections. Uh, these are some of the main community ones we've got. Every collection is a dedicated repository and they're their own working group. That means it's a group of uh, like-minded individuals that have been interested in, say, Ansible in AWS or Ansible in Grafana. Um, the so even though in Ansible 2.10 we've swapped to uh, having separate collections, if you install the Ansible 2.10 package, you will get Ansible Base plus the 71 collections that hold the modules that were previously in Ansible 2.9. So going from two, Ansible 2.9 to Ansible 3.0 will not break. Will not break you. Oh, your playbooks. So let's have a look at some of these uh, some of these collections. So currently we're in github.com slash Ansible collections. We can scroll down here and we can see we've got a lot of different repositories. Each of these repositories corresponds to a different collection. We also have this special overview repository at the top, uh, which has a, uh, a lot of information about what this is, why we're doing it, um, and a definition of terms. So it's always worth having a, having a look at that. So again, that's linked to from the top here. So let's just have a look at one of these collections. MySQL, as you might imagine, just contains all of the MySQL modules and plugins. So you can see here that it has uh, seven different modules in there. We know that it works for Ansible 2.9 and above. And there's some details about the external requirements. If I wanted to say if I was interested in using MySQL, I could have a look at the issues. And I could see that we have these two pinned issues at the top. So we have the pin board. And this is sort of like a, a, an agenda or discussion place where we can talk about where we want to go with the MySQL. Um, for example, so we can here see there's a discussion about how we can better use change logs and what we want to do when there is a uh, feedback forthcoming. And here we've also got the, the notes about the release plan of what needs to be done before the next release can happen. If I'm interested in this stuff as well, I can see with these labels, there's a number of things that are bugs in red, enhancements that are in uh, uh, blue and documentation there as well. And at the moment, we seem to just have two pull requests. So this working group is doing a really good job at keeping up with things. So we could have a look at a pull request, got a description of what they're trying to achieve here. And go to the files changed to see that they're uh, just changing this uh, require SSL privilege. So we could check this out locally, test it, and then put some feedback in the conversation to say, uh, yes, I've tested it on this setup, um, it worked for me, or no, I didn't test it, it failed with this. And that's really useful information on how we can, uh, you know, testing feedback is what stops us converting the fixes in normally. We also have, um, so as well as the dedicated collections like Windows, Grafana, MySQL, AWX, we have a, uh, two special collections. One is Community General and one is Community Network. This is the collection that is the home for for all the other modules that don't have a dedicated um, place. So if you're ever looking for a module and you can't find it, it's probably in here. Um, 
we can see plumber pull requests in here, and we have a lot of labels. So you could, if you're interested in uh, certain parts, you can just search by labels. One thing I should have showed, sorry, in the previous example is a little walkthrough of what the code looks like. So the mo most of the, the stuff that's of interest is in the plugins directory. And then generally we'll see documentation fragments, so that'll be shared docs, mod utils to so share bits of code, and then the individual modules themselves. So we could look at one of the modules. And if you remember earlier, I said that um, documentation is just YAML, which is this bit of code, this documentation fragment. So if you've noticed a problem with that, you could come in here, edit it, and submit a pull request. Next, we have the examples, the return values, and then the actual code itself. So it's all in one place. So it's quite easy for you to contribute. Well, I'll uh, come to the questions at the end. So we, we use GitHub to, to track and respond to most things. Um, it's our sort of official place of record. It uh, makes sure that if someone mentions something on, say, Twitter or Reddit or on the email list, that we actually track everything that it needs doing so things don't get lost. And then also acts as a historical record because then we can go back and say, oh, why did we implement something this way? Or you know, what was the actual problem we're trying to solve? So whenever you're raising an issue or pull request, we ask for as much information as possible. That really helps people because there's often assumptions or, you know, the case of it works on my machine, maybe you're using certain version of software, specific Ansible version, or uh, maybe a, um, a specific Python version. If you are new to using GitHub, uh, in particular raising pull requests, GitHub themselves have two excellent um, guides, which are on this last bullet point here. So that's lab.github.com and guides.github.com. They provide really good um, interactive walkthroughs and scenarios. Well, yeah, lab, I guess, as it says, um, which let you sort of test out in a, in a very safe environment, creating pull requests, updating it, making sure CI tests pass it. Pass. I do strongly recommend those. But even though GitHub um, is sort of the place of record, we, we do like that there are, there's an active community on, on Reddit, on Twitter, Stack Overflow, on the email list. They're really good for more discussion type places. But again, if there's ever a, a bug or a feature request that comes out of that discussion, please raise it in GitHub and then you know, link to the Reddit post. At a high level, this is the, the basic process for all issues and PRs. Someone will create them. They'll triage, so in the case of something raised against uh, Ansible Base, so GitHub Ansible Ansible, um, Jimmy C's team will go and triage that. Um, or in the case of a collection uh, issue or pull request, the maintainers of that collection, uh, we'll, we'll see when it gets created. And then we'll sort of go into this cycle of um, if it's a pull request, we'll you know, the author will go and fix the, fix the test if they're failing. We do have a generally pretty good test coverage. There'll be some discussion with the reviewers. Uh, you then need to uh, address review comments. Maybe then you'll need to go and fix the test again. There'll be this little cycle there. Once everyone's happy, um, we can then go and get the, the pull request merged. And in the case of a bug fix, we ha optionally have the um, power to go and uh, back pull that to uh, the previous Ansible release. For those of you that have been using Ansible for a while or contributing to Ansible for a while, I should say, um, you may notice that we got up to the pretty impressive, I think is the word, um, number of 2,000 open pull requests. One of the main reasons for that is the lack of reviews. Um, it's generally um, lack of reviews that's the thing that stops pull requests from being merged. So um, as we talked about at the beginning of the presentation, even if you're not a Python expert, uh, still being able to test out a pull request and give some feedback can really help everyone. But what's involved in a review? There's a few different uh, type of things that we need to bear in mind. 
firstly, that anyone can provide feedback on there. If you're a maintainer, collection owner, someone just passing, someone who may be interested in MySQL and Ansible, have a look at the MySQL repository. Uh, so community.mysql collection repository. Um, you know, does what people are, does what people are proposing there make sense? Um, as we mentioned, people merging code. Sorry, um, people reviewing code gives us the confidence to merge. Uh, we do big PR review days, and for Oktoberfest, so that's a GitHub and DigitalOcean's event uh, that happens in October. We'll be doing another one. We'll uh, send out details. We'll discuss that a bit more on Thursday. Um, but yeah, we really look to the community to, to help. So how do we actually do a review? Well, I guess firstly, there's a, a few different types. There's reviewing documentation, there's the functional review, and then there's the actual code review. Um, and again, you know, this all requires different sets of skills. Don't be put off if you're not a Python expert. Part one is the functional review. Uh, does the change do what it's meant to do? Does it address the, the user case that the uh, author was talking about or that the original um, uh, book reporter uh, had hit? Does it break any backward compatibility? Is the interface clear? Even without understanding the code, you can still um, answer most of these questions. On the case of the documentation review, this is a you know, could be for a, a brand new module or plugin, or maybe a large update to one. Is it clear how to use this thing? If you need to dig into the code to understand how to use a module, then maybe you failed a bit on, on documenting the module in the case of the uh, op documenting the options and examples. Is anything unclear? Is there any assumed knowledge? Um, these are all different things that we can uh, review at this stage. And then finally, we get into the the coding side. Is it clear, um, sorry, do we match Ansible's coding guidelines? In the case of our coding style, that's enforced by um, Ansible test, which is part of our CI pipeline. That bit's good. Um, you know, does it make best use for existing APIs or are we keep, does the module keep on trying to reinvent things? Do we do things in the Ansible way? For example, state should be present or absent if it's present absent or info, then maybe we need to create a separate information module, separate info module. Do we follow the create, read, update, delete principle? You know, does it follow how Ansible modules should be set up? When you're looking at a pull request for the first time, uh, it's quite easy, and I've, I've been definitely guilty of this when I started on, to sort of go and say, oh, I, I want to add something, I want to help here. And I've started looking at the the documentation or really nitpicking into the into what they've written, whereas you need to sort of step back and go, is what this pull request is trying to achieve, is, is that a good thing? It's, does it make sense what they're trying to do? Or it always an existing module or could you use two modules together to do the same thing? Once you've established if the idea is good, you can then go into, is it architecture currently? You know, does it follow the Ansible way? Um, are there, is the bits of code repeating or should they be using shared code for module utilities? Finally, you can get into is the uh, code polished? So that means, you know, is it uh, the best bit of Python? Are there better Python ways of doing stuff? Only then at that point may you slowly get into the notebook. There's no point um, doing a detailed review of something if it doesn't act, if the contribution isn't sound, for example. And we need to, and so the above three points is a really good blog post, which I'll, I'll link to later, called The Gentle Art of Patch Review, which goes into a lot more details of this. We need to be mindful, right, that online it's quite easy for someone to say something and for it to come across maybe a little bit critical. There's people with a lot of different skill sets, maybe where English is their, their second language, if you cast your mind back a few slides to where I showed the, the world map. Uh, you know, there's only a, you know, a small, uh, and most 50% of the people are in um, English native lang uh, language countries. Um, you know, think carefully about how you're feeling. So rather than you should do X, you could maybe rephrase it. Would it be clearer if? So it's much more of a suggestion. 
So one of the main ways that um, we really look for help is to get involved with the different working groups. Um, I know there's a long list here, but it's it's quite simple. We just have a look at the, uh, the list of collection repositories. The things we have on top of that, though, is we have some cross-functional areas. So we have the community team, which I look after the engineering element of, where we think about what is the best structure for collections, is there better ways that we can test things. Likewise, there's a dedicated documentation working group that, although um, has a few repositories it's particularly interested in, we sort of have to try and help out to us all our collections and repositories. So let me just bring back up the, the list of working groups that we've got again. But depending on what your interest is, I know that most people will have something in, in this set that they'll be interested in. You now, maybe you're interested in, in Shaw or Mongo, Kubernetes, VMware, some networking bits, DigitalOcean. There's lots of stuff here. So have a look at um, github.com slash Ansible collections. Scroll through the list of um, the three pages there of the different collections that we've got and, and find something that you're, you're passionate about. Well, you use Ansible a lot. That's people often ask, you know, say I want to contribute to Ansible. Where should I start? Well, we'll find something that you're interested in, right? That, that's going to maybe solve a problem that you've got, as well as give you the, um, the the best place to start with. This is one area that, since moving to collections, I think has got a, a lot better as we sort of. Um, delegated responsibility and empowered each of the individual working groups. Quite early on, we saw that uh, so community.grafana was one of the earlier collections that we, we got up and running. There's a couple of people there just working away, doing some good stuff. Um, and then they were doing their little stuff. I, I left them alone and came back a bit late, you know, a month or so later, and had come up with this really cool way of, um, of testing. So every pull request against Grafana, GitHub Actions, uh, GitHub's new CI uh, system that came around in the past year or so. And every pull request gets run against multiple versions of Python, multiple versions of Ansible, and multiple versions of Grafana. They had a really neat way of just spinning up a Grafana uh, Docker container and testing to every pull request in there. That's not something we could ever have done in Ansible Ansible just because of the sheer number of pull requests and the number of different things we were testing. Once we saw that how Grafana were doing that, we thought that's cool. And then we went and shared that with the different working group. And we were continually sharing uh, knowledge and ideas that people are having across there. Collections, sorry, working groups and collections, they also give people you know, the, the power, right? If, if you want Ansible to do a certain thing, you can get in there and you can you can extend it or you can propose that maybe you think it, um, the subjects collection should do X or they should change to be a different way. And you can have those discussions. Uh, in the case of collections, you you know, you're, you're in the right place. It's not like Ansible Ansible where you're maybe talking about Subex, but you're just two PRs out of 2000. You're sort of lost in the, in the noise. Now you have a much more dedicated place to, to talk. So all the collections, you know, at least the community ones happen on GitHub. I know OpenStack's on and Garen and some of the ones are on different platforms, but all the ones that Ansible helps support are in uh, github.com slash Ansible collections. Have a look through there. Um, you know, you'll see that the different ways they're communicating. Remember they had like the pinned issues, uh, where to like the pin board and the uh, release procedure in there. Um, some of the uh, large groups such as networking, Windows, Azure, uh, security, maybe they have uh, weekly IRC meetings as well um, that everyone's free to join. Uh, the, meet, the details of those will be linked from the from the README as well as the pinned issues in each of the repositories. Even if you can't make the meeting, you can still put stuff on the agenda and the meeting logs will be, will be linked. Um, if there's a set of modules in say community general that you think should be pulled out into their own dedicated collection um, feel free to speak with me or anyone else in the community team or just a wider community and we can help you sort of set that up before doing that we generally look to having two or three uh, maintainers because we don't want someone to sort of take on that responsibility and uh, uh, you know be solely responsible for that we'd like people to have some support 
Um, and one of the things I want to be really clear is that when we talk about joining these collections and these working groups and helping, we're not asking for people to say, you know, you must commit to five hours a week. You must attend all these meetings, do these things. If you're interested in using, I don't know, Kubernetes and Ansible, if you use Ansible to, to manage your Kubernetes infrastructure, just subscribe to the repository, have a look at it when you have some time. That's cool. You know, if you can add even just on one pull request, uh, I've tested this and it works for me. That will give us a bit more confidence to go and merge that pull request. And that's benefits everyone. So the call to action. I've been talking about github.com slash Ansible collections quite a lot. Please go and uh, have a look through there. I'll put some of these links in, in the chat for you now. Um, go and have a look through there, subscribe to some of the repositories. Maybe don't do that on Community General or Community Network. They're pretty large repositories and you'll uh, get spammed by GitHub a lot. But any of the other repositories, go and uh, subscribe to them, have a look what they're all doing. You know, I know there'll be some collections that are relevant to your day job. Uh, we have the Bullhorn, which is the Ansible community newsletter. Um, subscribe to that. Carol's going to be talking a little bit more about that later on today. Um, Every so often we all get together when we sort of uh, go through a load of pull requests. So maybe there's some pull requests that you've got where you've got stuck and you just need some extra help. Otherwise, we just sort of brute force the, the backlog. So just go through every open PR one, in, uh, one by one and try and get some extra eyes and get them merged up. So merged in. Um, meetups are still happening. Um, not all of them are in person at the moment. Uh, but, you know, a lot of them have gone virtual now. Um, one of the cool things about that, as we're seeing today with the 250 people that are uh, here now, is that, you know, you, they're more time zone based, right? So you can join something uh, even from the other side of the world um, and go and join in the discussion there. If you have any questions, please do drop them in the Q&A panel. I'll stop over to that in a minute. Um, otherwise, feel free to reach out to me directly, gundlo at redhat.com or on Freenode. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gundalo. I think you have some polls that you want to... Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Cool. So I've just put up the first poll. Oh, and I see we have lots of Q&A. Yes, um, so and yeah. also a lot of people have been helping to answer, so thanks to, for that as well. Um, there is one from Craig Brandt. Will you please run through a demo example on creating a PR for Ansible project? Is that possible to do that? Uh, probably won't be able to do that right now. Uh, hang on, let me let me find something. So is that so? That was specifically for the Ansible project. Yeah. So, if you're new to using um, GitHub, um, so I'm now going to github.com slash Ansible Ansible. If you want to make a one-line fix to something, say if I want to update the, the cron module, um, I'm just picking up because I know it's in Ansible base. So I could go to lib Ansible modules, if I search for cron, Find that. A little bit. So I'm now at uh, github.com slash Ansible Ansible lib Ansible modules cron. So if I click this edit icon here, um, if this is your first time using repository, it will uh, give you the ability to the fork, which will take a few seconds. And say if I want to just change the formatting on this. Um, so CGIB means it's a, a code block. I can remember that. I'm pausing because it's a bit different because I have commit to the Ansible. So I think that is the, the right way. 
No, that was the wrong way. Anyway, I will basically do. So now what I've done is I've, I've got a one line fix to the cron module. And then I have this issue template, which I should uh, fill in. Um, so let's say better use of formatting. Use code block. For example. Um, and then in this issue type, I this is a book for, uh, documentation improvement, so I will delete the others. Run module. Additional information isn't needed. And it is as simple as that, right? So now we have a pull request created, um, shippable, which is the CI, uh, so the continuous integration pipeline that we use for Ansible is running. That'll do things like make sure the integration test pass, that the code matches our coding standard. Um, make sure that all of that stuff looks good. Um, in a few moments, Ansible bot will comment on this. Because I've um, got direct commit on the Ansible repository, will probably tell me that I've done this the wrong way, but for everyone else, this way is will be good. Um, and you can see the changes, line change in there. So someone can review this and merge it once they're happy. Uh, so I hope that was useful, but um, yeah, feel free to have a play around with that. Sorry, was it David that I started? I can't see the Q&A at the moment. Um, uh, have a play around with it and ask um, some more questions if you want in the chat. There's another question, Carol. I think most have been answered by uh, everyone helping out to answer, so. I see David asked, what's the relationship between the Ansible community, Red Hat, AWX, and other major stakeholders? Did we go over that one? Sure. Um, so you know, I, I get paid by Red Hat, which I'm, I'm thankful for, because it lets me do some really um, cool stuff. But a lot, if you remember the uh, bubble chart, so the different colored circles, a lot of the code all comes from the community. So I, I see that my job and the job of my team is to sort of just help support and empower uh, the wider community, and that includes you know people like uh, like yourselves all on this call to to do great things. Um, AWX is the the upstream for Ansible Tower. Um, we take Ansible um, some of the supported collections, um, Ansible Tower and, and some other bits, and they all get wrapped together as and sold as the thing that's the Ansible automation platform. You know, we all talk closely, but uh, at the end of the day, I think the uh, you know the community does what it needs to do um, and does some really cool stuff. I'm not sure if there's a specific part of that question, David. Feel free to, uh, to ask some more to reach out to me on chat. Uh, so I see Adrian says, with Ansible 2.10, breaking out the core modules into multiple uh, collections, is this a rally call for communities to be formed, like database group, MySQL, Postgres, et cetera? Yeah, I, I think this is the great time. Uh, we, If you've been using both with Ansible contributors for, for a while, you know that we've sort of talked about these different working groups before. Sometimes we've created very specific ones, like Postgres. Sometimes we've tried to create bigger ones, like Cloud. Um, they, I'll be honest, they, they've had varying success. I think now with the, the move to collections, where well, you know, a, a, a collection is its own repository, I think that promotes each of these things to be true first-class citizens. Um, and I think it really helps promote the, the working groups. Um, I may be misunderstanding your question, but maybe you're, you're saying, should we have some overarching working groups, like a database one that helps look after the MySQL and the Postgres and MongoDB and RiDB? Maybe, you know, if, if people think that's a good thing, then we should we should go do that, right? I, I don't pretend to have all the answers. This is a, 
a community effort. Um, I know that at the moment we have dedicated collections for for MySQL and for, for Mongo. I know that MySQL has got a good set of people contributing to it. I know in the case of MongoDB, I think it's only one or two people that are that are contributing to that. So it would be nice to, to get involved and to help them. There's a question about RSD channels, and I think um, he said he just tried Ansible and Ansible community. No luck. Did um, did we remove the um, registration? Uh, oh. No, I will. I will go and do that. So yeah, let me. IOC has a lot of advantages. You know, it's very simple. You don't have to pay for it. It will. It's been around for longer than Slack has ever been a thing. And it's been around infinitely longer than Google has had the, you know, the cumulative sum of all the chat programs that it's created and destroyed. Um, however, it does get a lot of spam. Uh, sorry, it occasionally gets a lot of spam, which is why the channels require you to be registered. Um, I forgot to remove that requirement earlier on today, so I will go and do that. If you try again in 20 minutes or so, we should be good. Um, yeah, I can see some people talking about Visual Studio. That's got some really nice as well. Well, I think all the other questions have been answered. Cool, lots of really good questions. Thank you, everyone. And yes, once again, the the slides and the presentation and video recordings of the presentations will be shared. Uh, I can see 100 people have voted, so I've got uh, roughly 30% uh, of people that have voted. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Sanjay is asking, any playground where I can start Ansible? Also group to get latest update. Yeah, good question. So latest updates, I'd say subscribe to the uh, Bullhorn. I'll share the link. Ah, thank you. Um, regarding playgrounds, a little bit later on, um, we'll be sharing the links for Catacoda, which is a sort of virtual learning environment, um, which I think is a quite an interesting way to sort of get involved and to play and to, to see how to how you can do a little bit of Ansible development. Um, so I hope that will be useful for you. Uh, there's a question, uh, is there an option to get PyWinRM on Ansible controller, which is not connected to the internet? Um, I, I know that, that that is a script. I'm not that familiar with the Windows side. I'm guessing you probably need to download it from uh, from the Ansible repository and, and put it somewhere maybe on your internet server if you've got something there. Uh, let, let me find a link to the going starter group windows and see if there's uh, some details we can share there. It's about time we can take a short break. We can, of course, we, we um, will still be online and uh, you can continue asking questions in the Q&A and chat. And uh, we will resume in 15 minutes. Is that okay, Gandalo, or would you like to, do you have something else to add? No, I think that's good. Uh, is it possible to get a 15 minute timer up? Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. Great, uh, so I'll stop, I'll share this timer. And like I said, feel free to continue chatting, but we will be back in 15 minutes. <laughs> 